A very good morning, everybody. And uh, for the next three weeks, you're going to have me sharing with you morning by morning um, in these daily devotions as James takes a well-deserved rest. And uh, I, have, I have wondered about what I need to share with you. Uh, and I have come to the conclusion that you really don't need to hear me. What you really need to hear is God. And you need to hear Him speaking. And the way that He speaks most clearly is through His Word. And so the focus for the, the coming days is going to simply be that. That we look at His Word. Sometimes it'll be a verse. Sometimes it might be uh, two or three verses. Sometimes it might just be a sentence. And we're going to ask God to speak through His Word to us. And then, of course, it's going to require a response. And I'm going to ask that each morning, after having uh, heard, read the Scriptures, that you take off some time to, to just reflect and maybe interact with God on whatever it is that He might have said to you during that session. And so let's start off this morning. We're going to be looking at Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, his letter to the Philippians, and he's writing it from, from prison in Rome, in Italy. Philippi is in northern Greece, in the province of Macedonia. And it's a letter full of hope and, and endearment and joy. He doesn't have to assert himself in any way. Uh, the only problem, slight problem, is that there is there are two ladies who are at loggerheads in the congregation, and he deals with that later on. But we definitely won't get close to that in the coming days. But let's start from Philippians chapter 1 and ask God to speak to us. Let's just do that right now. And so, our Father, we acknowledge the Scriptures to be your word to us people as it has been over centuries. And we ask, please, that you would take it, Holy Spirit, and speak to each of us. And we ask this now in your name. Amen. And so, to the Word, the Word of God. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 1. And as was uh, common in those days, the in, in starting of the letters, the, the writer would introduce himself. And that's what the Apostle does here. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. Uh, it, it's interesting that Timothy must have joined him. He was probably under house arrest, and Timothy was able to be with him and to help him in many practical ways. And, and so he introduces himself and Timothy, and not as in so many other letters where he's needing to assert his authority as an apostle. Here he just says, servants of Christ Jesus. To, and now his addressees, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. To all the saints, that word, we often associate that just with historical figures or figures in paintings uh, who have been attributed as having had sainthood. But in the scriptures, the word is, is simply the same word that is used for being holy. To all the holy ones, those who are holy in Christ Jesus. And being in Christ Jesus is something that's fundamental to being a Christian, to calling oneself a Christian. Being in Christ Jesus, um, the holy ones who are in Christ Jesus at Philippi. A bit of a question as to exactly what it means to be in Christ Jesus. Um, Paul uses in Christ, uh, I think it's 30 odd times, and he uses in Christ Jesus about 40, 40, uh, more than 40 times in, in his letters. It's, it's a concept that is fundamental to his understanding and our understanding of what it means to be a Christian. Um, and, and one author has, has said that it's... Uh, as much as a bird is in the air or a fish is in the water, so we are Christians in Christ Jesus, with all the freedom to be exactly what God has created for us to be. 
and he writes to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers. That word, again, is the same word that is often translated as bishops, um, the episkopoi, the overseers and deacons, both the spiritual leaders and those who are in more practical leadership in the church, in the community. And this is his desire for them. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, it, it, it's a word that has to do with, with some joy and, and just the delight of, of, of knowing God. Um, understanding that it's not because of anything we have, but it's only because of what God has done for us. It's called grace. Grace and peace. Um, not just as a matter of being without trouble, but as settled being at peace with God and with ourselves and with others. And he says, that's what I long for, for you. And so this morning, as we consider those words, let me ask you, would you describe yourself as a servant of Christ Jesus? What is it that you do that makes you a servant of Christ Jesus? And as you take time off this morning, won't you consider that? What is Jesus calling you to do as a holy one, as one who is in Christ? What is he calling you to do in service of him and his kingship? And then to ask yourself again, do you have the peace that goes with that? And if not, won't you ask him for peace this morning? Grace and peace to you, O saints. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ.